Hey everybody, Adam Savage here. And earlier this year, I got to embed on the set of one of my favorite shows, Silo, during its second season production for Apple TV+. And in the coming weeks, Tested is gonna take you behind the scenes of a whole bunch of aspects of Silo's season two production. We're gonna meet the artists, craftspeople, costumers, and prop makers and set builders, the folks building out the incredible world of Silo. Let's dive in. Hello, Sally. Hello, Adam. So nice to meet Lovely you. Lovely to meet you. I am, I'm such a fan of the show. Really? I'm, I'm really, really curious about your philosophy of costume for Silo. <laughs> how, how do you even start to design for a world like this? Wow, okay. So um, yeah, it all starts with the showrunner, Graham yeah. and Morton Tilden, who sort of set the scene for the first season. And they worked with Charlotte, the costume designer, mm -hmm. who I work for. I'm an assistant costume designer. So we all worked together as a team. And I think obviously Graham had a vision. Morton had a vision. They'd all spoken to each other about how they wanted it to, yeah. to unfold. And Charlotte brought along her own ideas as well. And I think the kind of slight retro feel that you might get from it, it that stems from this kind of feeling that the silo wanted to be somewhere that, that felt like, you know, the citizens couldn't progress because they were, you know, they're, they're sort of oppressed. And so they, they basically um, brought in lots of vintage clothes, yeah. sort of 70s, 40s, that kind of thing. Um, and also to give it a kind of homespun feel so that there's lots of knitwear, there's lots of, you know, sort of um, woven fabrics and things that look like they've been repurposed. Yeah, I see a lot of darning, a lot of patching. There's a lot of darning, yeah, patching. But absolutely. it doesn't look haphazard, it looks like it's <laughs> a part of a process. Yes, absolutely, because they're so limited with what they've got, basically. They have to reuse everything. They have to, um, and I think we know that they've been in there for a very long time. We know that they've been in there for 140 years because, obviously, Mayor Jeans talks about the revolution that happened. Yeah. Um, and they have Freedom Day when they celebrate, you know, and it was 140 years ago. So we know it's been a really, really long time. And so the clothes are from basically what we know now, but then they've moved on in certain ways that basically where they've lived in this, this microcosm, this small oh. community, and they don't have any sort of um, exterior references. They don't, they're not allowed books. They don't have TV. They don't have anything really. It's just yeah. what they've got in front of them and they've had to sort of repurpose it. And so in that way, we were hoping to create a look that was just unrecognizable. You know, right. if, you, if you saw anyone dressed in a silo costume walking down the street, for example, now, it would look really odd. Right. And just not something that's recognizable, even though you've got trousers, jackets, yeah. and the rest of it. But the way it is put together, it, it gives a look that's Un, you know, sort of unrecognizable and slightly futuristic. But so as I look around at the yeah. costumes assembled, I was thinking, you know, set deck decorates a set and it sets a mood, mm. but you guys can't just do that with one object. You have to do it with hundreds of them yes. and still set the same mood. Absolutely, yeah. It's 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 quite a thing, for, especially for the, the crowd, the supporting artists, where yeah. we're creating another layer of, of, of scenery effectively, I wouldn't call it an extra piece of scenery, because that's a bit rude, but they basically, yeah, they create the mood. And we have to dress our background so that they show us where we are in the silo. Oh, what level we might be on. Exactly, yes. I mean, obviously we've got the the, the floor numbers and yeah. all, all that kind of thing, but um, so that also it has to provide a, good, a background for the, um, for the actors that doesn't sort of draw attention away from the actors. Right. Um, um, but also, works well with their costume. So um, I work with Charlotte in terms of uh, palette, color, you know, sort of, um, and I would say the other sort of element is that we slightly enhance the details on the background actors because obviously they're a bit further away from camera. So the so detail- You gotta make those details pop more. Exactly. Because so the camera does this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so on the actors, you know, the darning that you, that you mentioned, darning and patching and that kind of thing. Sort of on Rashida's jumper, for example, you can see this lovely, fine darning work, and, yeah. which obviously right up close is, is brilliant. But then if, if we've got some background actors sort of 10 feet away, we have to overemphasize that detailing. So, uh, Will you walk me through some of these costumes? Oh, sure, I, sure. I'm just, they're so beautiful here. <laughs> So um, 
Basically, I've put a few things on stands for you to see yeah. the difference between a down deeper costume, a mids, and a oh. up top. Oh, so this is definitely down deep. This is down deep. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like these were my people, personally. <laughs> so these, these are just some examples. We've got some more on the wall there behind. But, oh, my gosh. Um, and also, the, the temperature within the silo is, is, we've decided, I don't think it actually mentions it anywhere in the script, but yeah. it's pretty sort of uniform from top to bottom. It, about sort of 20 degrees or so, and it's maintained at that temperature. So people don't need to wear lots of heavy coats and things right, like that. Right. They do wear jumpers and knits, but I think that's more of a craft thing because um, Mejong's often knits and she knits blankets and things like that. So knitting. Of course, knitting is something they could keep doing. Exactly. And then they can sort of recycle woolen garments as right. well and pull them apart and re-knit them and that sort of thing. So yeah, basically these guys, this, this was a costume that we used in the recycling plant so mm -hmm. this lady was just dealing with recycled objects and it was all very dirty and and is, are these costumes a mix of found and made objects from items or are you making everything here for the it's year? a mixture actually okay yeah we, we use some um, sort of vintage um undershirts this has been made this this and this apron has been made oh. um and then it's all broken down um by a very skilled team headed up by elsa who who adds all this sort of uh break down to it to make it, it look old and It looks like dirty. they hit it with bleach and dirt <laughs> and everything oh, imaginable. They're so talented. They really just take a new garment and make it look ancient. It's, so you can just hand them something and say, mm, silo this. And absolutely. they do this yeah, and all of a sudden- Suddenly it's 150 years old. <laughs> I'm, I'm, as, as someone who makes and weathers costumes, I'm annoyed by how beautiful the weathering yeah. is. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> and we wanted to include some original pieces like this is a US Navy. Yeah. Um, sort of uh, bib and brace. So there's one or two pieces in there that, that are sort of, you know, vintage that we wanted to incorporate yeah. along with the things that we've made. So this is down deep there. This is down deep. They're more, uh, what is the uh, design philosophy? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, they are the people who keep the machines running. They right. keep the, the, the generator running, they keep the power on. So the worker bees. They're the workers and everything they deal with is greasy and dirty and all the rest of it. And so that's basically why they're all pretty filthy. <laughs> but they're also, um, there's the, the part of the story where they, they the, the rebellion starts down there. So yeah. they've, they're quite rebellious. They sort of believe that they're the most important people in the silo because they keep the power on. Yeah. Um, and they have this sort of slightly punky aesthetic as well. So some of the principal artists, for example, the, they've got sort of tattoos. They, you know, the, the costume is sort of a bit sort of ripped and a bit sort of, it's not quite as all covering and sort of modest as the upper toppers, for right. example. So they'll have a vest and they'll have, you know, cargoes and things like that. So they just, yeah, they look cooler, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Like I said, I think they're my people. Okay, so, and then we move up slightly. Yes. The color palette is um, something that came again from Graham and Morton. Yeah. Uh, where they, they wanted the, the, the sort of up top palette to be in the cool sort of blues and grays, the mids to be more warm and sort of dark reds and browns and things like that. Um, and so the, the patchworking is something that came from an interest in um, Japanese borrow, which is oh. the, the, the rags and the remaking of garments. Yeah. That's something that the, uh, the poor did in Japan to kind of make clothes last for over a hundred years sometimes. And since that's a deep philosophy of recycling mm. that fits right into Absolutely. your silo it philosophy. It completely works, yeah. And so, you know, that's, that's we've, we've, we didn't want to use actual borrow because it's just so precious and right. the rest of it. So we've made our own or uh, approximation of it. I love that. Yeah. So, um, and, and as you say, it, it, it just emphasizes the reusing and the recycling and just keeping clothing going. And so there's a lot of stitch work over the top of it and embroidery to sort of hold it together. And, if, you know, considering that a lot of this fabric is supposed to be yeah. two, 250 years old. So, yeah, that's the philosophy behind it. Do you find yourself now uh, infected with this and looking at clothing and being like, well, how would I silo this piece? And Absolutely. <laughs> I'm completely obsessed. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've always loved, um, you know, Japanese aesthetic anyway and sort of Japanese clothing. And so to be able to deep dive into it has just been a real treat. Amazing. Um, and, and so, yes, I mean, some of these pieces, like, for example, this um, waistcoat is something that we 
<laughs> so it, we, we source all the different materials, um, some of which are, we, we do actually use Indian camphor blankets, which mm -hmm. have a really lovely quality to them because they're basically lots of saris that have been sewn together. Oh, wow. And then they're and just- that gives sort of, you a lot yeah. of different fabrics so right off the So already bat. you've got a very worn sort of texture. Mm -hmm. And then we've just um, encompassed basically all the other fabrics that we've sourced. Wow. To, to make a patchwork garment. And then it goes to the wonderful Elsa and comes back looking <laughs> yeah. completely broken down. Your breakdown team yeah. is just incredible. They are very, very clever. So oh, yeah. I love this basket yeah. weave. So, so that's, yeah, that's really, and, and so we've combined this sort of aesthetic with um, existing garments and right. sort of garments that are recognizable from our culture now. Right. So that that sort of combination hopefully gives the silo look. <laughs> well, and, and as a spacesuit aficionado, I'm mm. particularly enamored of your outside suit. <laughs> yeah, so, so the concept behind the, the suit is that every person who goes out to clean is measured. So it's made to measure for them. So all oh. the fabric that is used to make it was put into the silo by the founders. Specifically for this. Mm -hmm. Apart and from the helmets, which are um, provided by the founders and kept in, you know, very secret area inside IT, which oh. none of the other citizens know about. Only the head of IT. Oh, really? Knows about the. And helmets. no one's asking. Where are all those helmets coming from? No. So. <laughs> and so. did you have to make a separate costume, or are Rashida and Rebecca close enough that you were able to use the same? No, they've all got their own. Really? Oh, okay. And several versions of each one. I know that's a bit of a. <laughs> it ruins the uh, illusion. Fair, fair. <laughs> But we have Joe here, who knows a lot more about the the suit, the oh, cleaning yeah. suit, than I do. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. I mean, I think Sally's covered it quite well, but <laughs> this is our environmental suit. It's really <laughs> lovely. Uh, I, I, again, as a spacesuit aficionado, I, I, I really love it, and I love the texture, and even the, the interior texture you've done here is really cool. Yeah, yeah, so there's lots of subtle textures in the whole costume, in fact, but still with a nod to the idea that it's being made within the silo. So right. within the confines of their technology, just a little bit elevated from the other things. Uh, how did the actors like putting this on? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not the most comfortable thing yeah. to wear, but there are lots of little secret hidden. So I mean, a person could not get into this suit whole as it is, so you can, there are lots of removable oh, parts. Oh, hidden, I gotcha, right. So it can separate. There we go. The helmet is quite claustrophobic, but that's why we have built-in visors that we there can There you remove. go, I was gonna wonder. So yeah. did you shoot a lot with the visor off and add in the reflections? Yeah, dictated by, exactly, yeah. dictated by VFX, depending on what we needed. Every director I know is like super happy to get rid of the visor oh, and put no it in one post. Wants the visor. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, that's, that's gotta be a lot better. For and com actor. more yeah. comfortable between takes, that's for sure. Uh, and it has some fans in it, I assume, to The initial fogging. idea was, was that there were fans. So this backpack here, if I can s turn her around. Yeah. Um, this was based on references from old miners' respiratory oh. equipment. Oh, cool. Um, and was designed practically to fan air into the helmet yeah. for comfort. However, lighting came along, <laughs> and in fact, that was now used as a battery pack oh. for the lighting. Okay. So then when you put the visor on, it fogs up pretty quickly. Uh, you, this is also true, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I keep on wanting to say, I want to go outside just so I could put this on. <laughs> but I don't think I would fit in that one. No. Actually, I'm sure I wouldn't. <laughs> Joe, Sally, thank you guys so much. It's amazing work you guys are doing. and I. I it, I'm really inspired. Like, I want to go home and weather some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely to see you. Thanks for coming. It's Thank amazing. You. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Apple TV Plus for having us on set. Season two of Silo premieres November 15th. Season one is streaming right now on Apple TV Plus.